Hey guys, what's up? This is Furfro again uh, for NBL Week 2. This week we're playing Kalch. Uh, I'll look at his team here. He's got a pretty good team. Uh, it's kind of annoying. We got the Mew. Very good, very good Pokemon. Buzzwall, pretty annoying too. Zygarde, very good against my team. This is Zygarde 10%, so very good against my team. And Chandelure, which... He's got some pretty good matchups against me as well. Um, Tyranitar, always always a threat, really, especially with my uh, triple psychic core. Um, Skarmory, big bulky thing. Sylveon, big bulky thing. Roserade, be pretty annoying offensively and pretty good special defense as well. And he's got this annoying little rain core as well here with the Swampert, Politoed, and Kingdra. Rounding out the end here, he's got Minior, Helios, yeah, or Heliolisk, and Mega Beedrill. Um, so, prepping for this team is kind of a bitch, because it's got those three Rainmons, Swampert, Politoed, Kingdra. Uh, you just can't ignore it. It's it's going to be pretty frustrating to deal with. Um, so, look at the Pokemon I ended up bringing to this matchup. We got... Um, I'll start off with my basically my rain answer here, which is Araquanid. Now, Araquanid is a really good Pokemon. I really like it here. Um, it was just such a perfect fit to my team. It's the only thing on my team that can just switch into Kingdra and not get instantly fucked. Um, whether it's a Hydro Pump or a Draco Meteor. And the EV spread we got for the Araquanid here is designed to live uh, either two timid uh, Dracos or um, or one uh, crit Draco in case he brought the crit draw set. Uh, it lives just barely and can just rest up on that or go for the Leech Life or Toxic. So it's a good answer to the Kingdra as well. Um, Swampert has to bring Stone Edge in order to hit this, and Stone Edge is not that great against sort of the rest of my team. I think he would much prefer to bring Ice Punch for um, for hitting hitting things. So things like the, uh, the Serena, which we also brought here. So Serena again is another another sort of um, little sort of rain answer, just generic Swampert switch in, hits it with Drop Kick, and gets it pretty low with that. But again, this is also my Zygarde 10% switch in. Now, Zygarde is a very good answer to my team. We've got uh, Toxapex, Celesteela, and Thunderous T. They all just get fucking hit by it. Can't really switch into it easy. If they get hit by a uh, thousand arrows, they're going to be dropping next turn. Uh, and my only real ground resist for Araquanid and Serena, so... It's pretty annoying. Um, for strategizing with this team, I really just ended up having to bring Trick Room, so I've got quite a slow team overall, and so the Trick Room basically meant that I could just ignore uh, if he brought his Rain Core, and if he didn't bring his Rain Core, his other ones are pretty fast anyway. Trick Room just worked very well against this team in particular because uh, if you look at the speed tiers here, his slowest Pokemon is Tyranitar. Oh, sorry, his slowest Pokemon is Minior with shields down, but that's going to be a shell smash set pretty much guaranteed if he's bringing it. Um, so, other than that, a slow spark one is Tyranitar. We have so many things that just going to underspeed it and take advantage of the Trick Room. Uh, so, this is why I brought this to Ancy set. I knew he'd be wanting to bring Taunt on his Mew, um, so I wanted the Mental Herb here, just allowing us to get off the Trick Room in that situation, and also Mew just kind of invalidates this Diancy set. Um, this Diancy set was kind of just a Chandelure annoyance. Chandelure can't really kill it, so it's got pretty special defense invested. To be perfectly honest with you, I kind of forget what the fuck I was doing with the other EVs in this set. I'm sure it was for something, but I can't fucking remember when I built the team. Um, it's just the two, two stab moves and neutral nature on those with the slowing speed for the Trick Room. Don't actually need to be this slow, but it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. Um, did have some potential to gyro ball against this team, but it's, it's he's not that steel weak, and we had 
other steel options are a lot better. Um, so yeah, this, and then I got this Reuniclus set. This Reuniclus set is just a uh, design to take advantage of if you didn't bring Tyranitar or if Tyranitar was dead. Psychic, um, the Life Orb Psychic just sort of goes to town on the rest of his team. His, uh, you see here, his Psychic Resists outside of Tyranitar is Skarmory, um, which doesn't really like being in against Reuniclus because Reuniclus obviously gets the, uh, so gets, I think it's Thunder Bolt Guts as well as Thunder. I can't remember. It actually gets both of those. Eh. It only gets Thunder. Okay, I'm bad. Um, but again, Thunder is also a possible bring against the Rain team as well. So, you know, it's not it's not ideal for it to be in against it. Um, and as well as that Psychic like just does hit it hard because it's uh, it is a physically defensive Pokemon. Uh, it's again, it's Trick Room, it's on the Trick Room setter, it can just set Trick Room and go to town once the, uh, once the Tyranitar was down. Um, and then on the offensive side here, we got this Thunderous set, which is a modest Thunderous, uh, and it's Agility. Agility is basically designed to, um, just outspeed the, uh, outspeed the Kingdra in rain, so it outspeeds Timid Kingdra, just barely. Uh, and it's modest, so we can just fire off the really powerful Thunderbolts. Uh, if he brought his rain team, I was just going to agility on the uh, either the Politoed or the expected switch into the Swampert when I've against the Politoed. We get agility, we outspeed the Swampert there, and then we, you know, can Grass Knot it, and we can Thunderbolt the rest of his team pretty much, except for uh, the Heliolisk or the Tyranitar, and that's where Superpower comes into play. Superpower, uh, when it KOs the Heliolisk, and as well as the Tarantar that's not Chobleberry, so this was just quite nice. Just seemed like a, like a good bring. Uh, it seemed very likely he was going to bring either Heliolisk or the Chandelure, and I think uh, Heliolisk was just better because it's the guaranteed electric against my team, which again has got the Celesteel, the Toxapex, both weak to electric, um, and the Rockwind as well, if you ever need to do that. Uh, he'll ask us to get Pokemon. So we went with the Chillin Berry here. This was in case he brought. Um, I, I was imagining Thunderous getting a little bit chunked, um, setting up with the agility. And I imagine he would also bring the banned Zygarde if he was going to bring the Zygarde set. So the Chillin Berry just gets reduced from damage from the extreme speed. And also, uh, meant it could also just kind of set up on the. Uh, Heliolisk, because Hidden Power Ice. I didn't think he would actually bring Hidden Power Ice. Um, Hyper Voice just seemed seemed pretty good, but again, it was just a, it was an option for him. Um, so that worked out pretty well. And finally, the uh, Celesteela set here we've got. This is just a physically defensive Celesteela with uh, so three coverage moves. The Giga Drain, obviously, for the rain stuff. Flamethrower mostly just for Skarmory, and then Leech Seed. Leech Seed worked very well against this team. Uh, he did not enjoy having a Pokemon just sitting in being Leech Seeded. Uh, Flamethrower dealt pretty decent damage to Buzzwool if it needed to. This set gets completely walled by Chandelure, uh, but I felt comfortable with Nancy for Chandelure. If he was going to bring Chandelure, I would have just kept Nancy up um, for whenever I needed to put and against Chandler, so that was fine. This thing one hit KOs uh, non-defensive Sylveon and does like 70 to 85 percent to defensive Sylveon, so it was really big damage in there. Deals a lot of damage to Tyranitar and doesn't take much back from Stone Edge. Um, his Z users are these four here, so again, I wasn't too too scared of like there's no threat of a Z Tyranitar set up. Um, so yeah, um, not much else to really to say. The um, rock when it is uh, rest Chestoberry, which is again designed to um, just just switch into the Kingdra. Um, it can tank two Draco meteors or one of the crit Draco meteors. Um, I'll show the calc later on, um, and we'll just get into the game here. So he has brought this team, which is the Rainless Kingdra. So that looks pretty likely to be either a Cryptor or an Agility Cryptor set, something like that. Um, it's a pretty decent bring to me actually because of the speed tiers with my team. 
Uh, it fits in quite well. 85 against um, like my actual speed tiers is pretty nice. Like it, it only gets outsped by sort of four former Pokemon here. Um, so it's pretty nice there, to be honest with you. Uh, it's got the Heliolisk as well, which is quite a big, big damaging thing to me. Uh, Minier with the Shell Smash. I was a bit surprised he brought this just because it gets completely invalidated by Celesteela. I was not scared of it at all, but um, he did bring it, so we kind of had to play around that a little bit. So I, I, I tried to keep Celesteela quite healthy for most of the game. He's got Mew here. I did imagine him bringing Mew, and I thought it'd be uh, physically defensive or the special defensive set, just one of the defensive sets um, with Will O Wisp, because I do have. Glade and Salamence for my physical attackers, and does pretty good at dealing with those. But we get in turn one here, he goes to the Heliolisk, I go for a Deancey lead. Um, <coughs> Deancey here, it's not got actually a great matchup against most of his team here, so I just wanted to get rocks. Um, figured if he was going to be bringing Skarmory into it, that's fine. So we take the Surf, and because we're especially defensive, it doesn't do that much damage. And we just go for the Trick Room here. Trick Room just means we're guaranteed to get off the Stealth Rocks next turn. Um, and we're guaranteed to, like, we, we threaten this with Diamond Storm. It's about 75% damage. So I go for the Diamond Storm here, hoping for um, just doing a bit of damage to it. And also getting maybe the Physical Defensive Boost, but that's fine. So we do 27% to the Skarmory. This tells me that this is a specially defensive Skarmory set, um, which, like, it, it's not that surprising, to be honest with you, because it's, it's you know, it's obviously, he's got, I do have quite a lot of special threats on my team, um, and Skarmory sort of naturally deals with my physical threats pretty well. This can, you know, help deal with, uh, if I was bringing, like, a Z Fire Blast on the Salamence set or something like that, um, so it's, it's a pretty good Pokemon, but here we just trade the rocks, and I'm fine with this. Um, I then go into um, my Celesteela here, because I just wanted to see, kind of sort of wanted to see what he would do, I didn't really have much else to play, um, the na obviously natural one would be going to Serena for the Rapid Spin, but it didn't really feel like I needed to, so I just go into Celesteela, and he whirlwinds, which is fine, and then we get uh, Serena come out here. So, figured he'd switch on this turn. Um, I did take U-turn off for knockoff on this, so I just go for the knockoff here, and we get to hit the Mew, knock off its leftovers. Um, deals okay damage here. It was kind of hard to calculate this set, um, just with how the rolls were, but it was uh, 252, around 60 defensive set, um, and it's a timid set. I think a timid or jolly one too. Um, but yeah, so here I'm just gonna go back into Diancy. Um, I figured he'd either go for the Will O Wisp or just roosting up here or soft boiled up. I think he goes, yeah, soft boiled up recover. So that's fine. He goes for the taunt on on the uh, Diancy, which is where the Mental Harp comes into play, and we get the free trick room in. Then go into Araquanid, because Araquanid um, is just quite a big threat to his team. Liquidation just does a lot of damage. And, like you'll see here, Liquidation, and this is a crit, but he has 53.9% on the crit. Um, pretty good damage to Skarmory. It's basically just fishing for defensive boosts, the defensive losses here, while the Trick Room is up. Um, unfortunately, we don't get any until the last, last Liquidation here, so it's doing 40% to it, get the defensive drop. Again, I decide to go for the liquidation here because it does uh, threaten to kill with the roll. He goes into his Kingdra, um, which I thought was fine at this point. Uh, and then he goes for the focus energy. I go for rest just in case it was like a Specs Kingdra set. And we would have lived like one Specs Kingdra hit. That was fine. Um, but yeah, we go for the rest, so this is actually quite important, we get to full here against the, the Critter set. And I go for Toxic, he's go for Substitute, I thought he'd go for Agility here, which is why I went for the Toxic. Um, just, just, just gave me that sort of ability to survive, um, just, just kind of stall it out, really, but he goes for the Sub as I Toxic it, which is a little bit annoying. And he goes for the Draco Meteor here, and there we go, at 99.4%. 
and I will actually show you the damage calculation on this one here. Um, so it was a timid King Dorset. This damage calc actually loads ever. So it's pretty just uh, the standard crit Dorset versus here. And as you can see, well, if that actually is the right set, it is not. All right, this is modest, so this is, yeah, he is timid. So on this roll here, yeah, this is a max roll, and it doesn't actually kill it, which is very nice, very nice for me. And then each life here, which is going to be my next turn here, will break the sub. This is fine. At this point, Araquan has really sort of done its job. Um, there's no agility. There's no other setup, so I can just go into Thunderous T and hit the Thunderbolt button, which is fine. That gets rid of the Kingdra, which is a big threat to my team, surprisingly. Um, he goes for the Hidden Power Ice on the Heliolisk. I just go for Super Power just to get just get rid of it there. That's fine. He goes for the Zygarde 10%. Um, I just naturally go to Diancy here. Just Diancy's pretty worthless at this point. Doesn't do much, so I'm just gonna sack it there. See if I can figure out what his set is. Um, he's just going for a thousand arrows, so I'm assuming it's gonna be just just the banded set there because he didn't go for the extreme speed. Um, so this is fine. So I just rapid spin on it here, which is absolutely fine for me because we get rid of all the hazards. And he goes into Skarmory, so. As he goes into Skarmory here, I'm just going to go back into Thunderous T because he can't do, like, it's very unlikely that he's going to go for the Brave Bird or anything just with how he's been playing with the Skarmory. Um, it's the Whirlwind set, Whirlwind, Roost, Stealth Rock, and Spikes I think has been revealed, so yeah, it's, there's no attacks on the Skarmory. So it's entirely Tom Bait, but I, I know I can just switch into Thunderous with 3 on it with Rocks of Noun, which means I can then press the Thunderbolt button. And here is where the game gets a little bit fucky. So it goes into the Mew and we get a crit and this is it's like okay that's a decent amount of damage um, and then he goes for the soft boiled on it he does outspeed me but we go for Thunderbolt again and we crit again. Now looking back on this I don't think like given his actual Mew set I don't think this made too much of a difference at this point um, probably differential wise, I didn't have much to actually deal damage to the Mew outside of the Reuniclus. Um, but it 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 was like knockoff Will O Wisp, uh, soft boiled and taunt was his his full set for this. So it wasn't like a big threat to me, and I felt like I could, I could pretty easily just go in with Reuniclus. Um, and hit Shadow Balls at it all day, if I needed to. But it, it, it was very unlucky to get the back-to-back -back crits uh, from his point of view. Obviously, I, th I think he would have expected me to outspeed him. Um, so he was just going for the softball to like see if he could live. But it's it's it does happen. So it's, it's pretty unlucky. Um, but yeah, he goes into Zygarde to try and revenge kill this. And I'm just gonna switch again into Serena because Serena at this point is just gonna be dedicated Zygarde switch in. Um, I don't go for the rapid spin here. I instead go for the synthesis just to keep it keep it nice and healthy. He goes into Minior, um, which is where I've been keeping the Celesteela very healthy all game, just as a, in case of this situation. So I just go straight into Celesteela. Um, he goes to the Shell Smash, White Herb. Uh, it's also why I didn't go for like any sort of trop kick or anything last turn because I didn't want to get this into its uh, other form. So this is just not this. He's gonna go for the Stone Edge here, and it won't do much damage. I think it goes yeah like forty-five percent physically defensive, and that's absolutely fine. So we go in, get the defense boost. Now this defense boost actually means we can stay in against the Zygarde here, and we're gonna go for the Heavy Slam again. Um, thousand arrows because it doesn't. The thing with thousand arrows is it doesn't actually give you super effective damage if you're not smacked down already. So you can sort of stay in for one and then you have to go. That's what we do here, and we just heavy slam it for pretty big damage. Um, this 
also let me confirm it was the banded set, um, if it didn't already, but yeah, just with the damage it was doing with this, it was definitely banded. It was quite a high roll on the actual thousand arrows it did. Um, and that was absolutely fine, so we just go back into Serena, and at this point the game is pretty simple. All I have to do here is rapid spin um, on Zygarde, just to be able to get Thunderous back in. So yeah, we just rapid spin there, <coughs> um, and go back into the Thunderous, which is fine. He goes for the Whirlwind, which is a good play, um, it brings back in the Serena. I'm going to go for the knockoff here. I was kind of expecting him to double into the Zygarde, um, just as a potential play, but at the same time Knockoff just got rid of the leftovers and made Skarmory be less annoying to actually kill. That means that we're actually going to do anything because it is just that, it's the taunt bait set, we do have Rapid Spin. Um, and then bring in Celesteela here instead of going to the Thunderous directly, and we uh, I think go for the Leech Seed on this play. I know, go, go with the flamethrower. So you go with the flamethrower just, just, just to like fully um, see the damage on it. As you see, it is definitely especially defensive. Um, Skarmory doing 41%. We got a burn, which is not too impactful, but it's just a bit, bit lucky on our side there. Um, go for the lead seed to miss, which is unfortunate. He goes for the whirlwind and gets the thunderous T. Is able to kill that with the stealth rock damage. We can go into Reuniclus, which hasn't done anything this entire game, and we're just going to set up Trick Room um, and fire off. Uh, I think it's Psychic, actually, we fire off on this. This Trick Room really was just for Celesteela, because I liked being able to have Celesteela in the Trick Room. It does underspeed the, um, the Skarmory, which means we could potentially hit damage before it's able to roost. Um, he whirlwinds the Reuniclus out, probably scared of the Calm Mindset maybe, something like that, which is fair enough. Um, go back into Celesteela here, and we just go for we go for the Flamethrower, which could potentially kill on a higher roll. Um, brings it down to within 5%, and then he roosts there, which is fair enough. I think we try again for... Oh no, we go for the Leech Seed here, which basically just confirms the win. Um, he can't switch Zygarde in because it's not going to do anything to... Celesteela, and we can just whittle it down with Flamethrower. He knows he's down here, so he's just going to spam the spikes. Um, and yeah, we just Flamethrower again, get the little defense boost, and finish off the Zygarde. I think with the Giga Drain. Um, as you can see, he goes for the Stone Edge here, just going for the credits. The most you can do at this point is damage you do, so... There we go. Um, it was a good game and all. A um, couple of things I was a little bit surprised at was not bringing the Chandelure, which I felt did a lot of damage to my team. And I was, I was really ex expecting like a a trick trick specs, a trick scarf Chandelure, um, just to deal with the Snorlax itself. But um, that will bring me to two and zero. So good start to the season so far. We play Vent next week and. Should be a fun game. Uh, yeah, looking forward to it. Anyway, thank you for listening, watching, whatever, and see you whenever.